Okay, this tutorial is uh, covering the Bohr model and or the Bohr model uh, line spectra using the Bohr model. And the Bohr model again is um, is named after a Danish physicist named Niels Bohr, and uh, he proposed that energy is quantized on these uh, discrete energy levels. And you'll see uh, the Bohr model is represented by these rings. The um, quantized energy levels or uh, principal energy levels uh, correspond to rings. Okay, so each element produces a characteristic and identical line spectrum according to its um, electron arrangement. Um, so the energy emitted by electrons from their excited states is specific for what energy level it was from. And uh, energy is emitted or absorbed by an electron, so energy gets emitted when the electron actually goes from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, and then energy is absorbed by the atom or by an electron when that electron is removed, so when it goes from a lower to a higher energy state. And uh, I think uh, these bullet points will make sense when we look at a couple pictures. Um, Okay, so and we could calculate this using the following equation: um, the energy emitted um, by looking at this equation. So, um, and this is also known as the Rydberg equation. Okay, so uh, more on the, this whole when an electron is emitted or absorbed. So um, this first bullet point we'll look at when uh, energy is absorbed. I'm sorry, when uh, energy is given off by an electron. So um, here we have a, let's take a, an atom with, Let's draw a couple protons. Um, and then we'll have uh, an energy level. And then we'll have another energy level. And let's say this electron um, was bumped into this higher energy state. So here's what here's what happens. It's supposed this electron here is supposed to be on this energy level. Um, but it's in the excited state, so it's on the second energy level. Um, this is n equals 1, and this is n equals 2 for uh, principal energy levels. And um, let's say uh, this electron goes back to its home energy level, and what it's going to do is uh, emit a very specific frequency of light corresponding to uh sometimes it falls in the visible spectrum okay but it will it will uh, emit a very specific frequency of light so energy is emitted with a specific wavelength and frequency and uh a lot of times it falls right in the visible light spectrum so let's draw another picture here so this is this picture first picture is before and then after um now the electron is back on n equals 1 the first energy level versus the second one okay and you get a certain wavelength of light um, and so this this process, when energy is given off, um, so that that wavelength of light corresponds to a certain amount of energy, and we say that this is exothermic, an exothermic process, because it gave off energy. Um, in this case, it happens to be a lot of times we think of exothermic, we think of uh, in terms of heat energy. But uh, when in atomic spectra, when they're either absorbing or giving off energy, it's in the form of light. 
So we say this gives off is another uh, synonym for exothermic. We sometimes we use the term um, energy is lost. Um, or another popular term is energy is released when this happens. Um, and you'll see that the calculated energy will actually be negative. So the, the energy calculated will be negative. Okay. Um, so let's look at the uh, opposite the opposite case. So an electron must take in energy to make an electron move from a ground state to an excited state. Um, you'll see in this case the uh, the electron absorbed energy. So um, let's say we have our atom. Let's make some protons and our two energy levels. And this electron, it wants to get... Um, it wants to move over here. So for in order for this to happen, um, this needs to take in energy. Okay, and so we say in this case, this this is a this process is called endothermic. So meaning uh, energy was taken in by the system, and the system in this case is an atom. So our after picture will look like this. So this is before and then after. Um, our picture is going to look like this. Make some protons. Um, our electron is in an excited state. So this a lot. So this is actually what happens when um, they pack elements with uh, gunpowder and shoot them up in the air fire you know like cannon them up in the air and when the gunpowder explodes this is exactly what happens is this happens first and then um, this happens second and then you end up seeing a, a certain frequency of light corresponding to a certain color so that's what happens in fireworks is you excite the electron so this happens again this happens first and then this happens second. So um, this is called the excited state when an electron is in some energy level that it's not really supposed to be in. And this overall, this process is uh, endothermic. And the prefix endo means to take in. Okay, other synonyms for exothermic is energy is absorbed. Um, taken in or energy is gained okay these this term gained or lost these are actually like really incorrect but I, I put them on there because sometimes you'll see that so as we know energy is never uh, lost or, or gained uh, but sometimes you see them often enough so I'll, I'll just throw that in there okay so let's try um, let's try a calculation so for uh, quanti quantization in a, in a hydrogen atom. And this equation really only works for a hydrogen atom. Um, and here's, here's the equation. So the uh, change in energy is equal to this. So where um, this term right here is an interesting term. This is uh, the, the principal energy level. Um, so it's actually the final minus the one over the final minus one over the initial energy level. <clears throat> so, um, and this is used to calculate energy change between any two energy levels. And uh, whether it's exothermic or endothermic, this equation will work. Um, that's why this negative sign is here. So you'll see that um, if you have a, an electron that goes from, let's say initially, the initial energy level is, um, let's say it's uh, on the first energy level, and then let's say it bumps into the second energy level for, um, the, for the final energy state. Okay, so let's say this, this is the case.
Um, it went from one to a two. So what does that mean? It means energy had to be put into this. Okay, so the calculated amount should end up being positive. Actually, let me go back. Um, let me go back a slide to this one. And uh, the, the calculated amount here. Uh, the calculated amount should be positive for endothermic processes, meaning energy is taken in, so it's positive energy. Okay, um, so we already know if it goes from one to two, this process, this atom had to take in energy to do that. Okay, so our calculated amount should be positive. So let's see, let's take a look and see what happens if we put a 2 here. Uh, so 1 over 4 squared, you'll get point, or 1 over 2 squared, you'll get 1 over 4, which is 0.25, over, and minus 1 over 1 squared, or minus 1. So this term ends up being, this whole term here ends up being negative. Um, and then we have a negative value right here, so you have a negative times a negative and you'll get a positive so your calculated value will actually end up being positive which is the correct result if you went from a from a one to a two energy level okay so that's kind of how to analyze this uh, conceptually this equation and uh, whether it's going to be exothermic or endothermic okay so um, Oh, one, one interesting thing is um, ionization energy. So when an electron is completely removed from an atom to ionize it, so meaning uh, to create a uh, cation, or ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron. Um, N final is essentially going to infinity. So the electron's like completely removed so um, in this case, the term uh, 1 over n final becomes 0 when that happens. So, um, and also note that um, the calculated value for delta E, the change in energy, uh, will end up being positive for when um, n final equals zero. In other words, another another way to state that is ionization energy is always endothermic. It's always the energy required to remove an electron. So that's always going to be the system in that case will always be absorbing energy. So ionization energy is always positive. Okay, these two stars are saying the same exact thing, basically. All right, so let's try a quick problem. So it says, calculate the wavelength of light emitted when the falling transition occurs in a hydrogen atom. What type of EM radiation is emitted? And what color would you see if, if it's the wavelength, if the wavelength is in the visible spectrum? Okay, um, so here's the transition when we go from a 4 to a 2. Um, so this is actually, if you think of our picture here, so this is actually if you have a, um, four rings, and so this is the, the energy going from the fourth ring, n equals 4, to the second ring, which will be this one, n equals 2. Okay, so this electron's going to travel all the way back down to the second ring. So... Um, we know that it, it's going from an excited state higher to a lower energy level. So the uh, excess energy should be given off. So this should be XO, and our calculated E value should be negative. Just some conceptual stuff before we start this problem, something to think about. OK, so here's our equation. Ten to the negative eighteenth joules times one over um, two squared 
since uh, the final energy state is 2 minus 1 over the initial energy level, which was 4. So this will be 4 squared. Okay. And by the way, these are, uh, if you're wondering about sig figs, these are exact numbers. Okay, so those don't, those don't result in like decimals. Those aren't really measurements per se. Our uh, equation, we can rearrange this. It's actually absolute, we're actually going to get the absolute value here. Um, because our final result here is we're going to try to calculate uh, a wavelength. And com we're going to compare our wavelength to the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum. Um, so that's why I'm putting an absolute value here is because we're going to get a distance in our result and we don't want a negative distance. That's that's like physically impossible. So I don't even know what that means actually, a negative distance. Okay, so that's why I'm, I'm putting those absolute value there. Um, so if I rearrange this to solve for wavelength, I obtain this wavelength equals HC over delta E. Okay, so if I, if I plug my numbers in, um, for actually for this, I, I actually, I have to do some side work actually. So this is getting a little messy. I'm going to save this, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to get this number here first. I'm going to do that first, and then um, I, since I know what Planck's constant is, and uh, these are both constants, then I could solve for this. I'll do this second. Okay, so the value here, I did this beforehand. So I get this number times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Um, and now um, on the next slide, I'm going to plug this in here. And I know this is a constant, and this is a constant. Okay, so I'll solve it here. Um, and be very careful with the units here uh, to make sure that they all match up and, and cancel out. Uh, joules times seconds is Planck's constant times the speed of light. Um, I, I always like to go this far with sig figs on the speed of light. Meters per second divided by um, the number I had on the previous slide, 4.084 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Um, so my joule unit cancels with that. The seconds here in Planck's constant cancels with that seconds, and then I wind up with a distance, which is what I want. So I get 4.864 4 times 10 to the negative 7th uh, meters. And to change that to nanometers, there are, in one meter, there are 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. I'm, I'm sorry, I messed that up. To the ninth nanometers. So <clears throat> nine minus um, nine minus seven is two. So I get uh, four point eight six four times ten to the second, which is four hundred and eighty six point four nanometers. Okay, and this corresponds to vi the visible spectrum, and it corresponds to light around here. Okay, so you'll see a bluish green color when that transition happens to answer the uh, original question.